Welcome back, everyone, to episode two of our new campaign here on Grand Tactician The Civil War. I have gone in and started making some changes uh, to our division commander. Since, uh, if you did not see episode one, there's a link in the description to take you back to the first episode uh, where I explained that what we're doing is I am not issuing brigade level commands. So everything I'm doing is at the division level. Uh, which means those division commanders have to be good. So I started looking for some better division commanders. Uh, Army of Northeastern Virginia, I've got Jar John Barnard, uh, Orlando Wilcox, and Henry Hunt. They're not great, but they're better than the single star guys that I had. Uh, eventually, we'll get some even better generals. I've got folks like Grant out there and others that eventually we'll get in there. It looks like George Thomas would make... Uh, for a decent division commander. So uh, once we create more divisions, John Gibbon's pretty good. Um, once we create more divisions, or we're going to have a lot more divisions in our army before it's all said and done, um, we'll get some of these brigade commanders that are decent uh, up to division level command. But we're just not there yet. We've got a couple of days left until the Militia Act 3 policy. Five days, that'll be passed. And then we're going to start by getting our... Uh, patron divisions recruited and then we'll go into brigades from there we got some movement happening here uh, in northern virginia and it looks like the army of the shenandoah has made a move we're going to be slightly outnumbered on this one so i'm a little nervous about this battle but let's see what happens all right this is a pretty uh straightforward battlefield no major barriers between us and the enemy he's coming in from the south we're coming in from the north it looks like we have the advantage here which is really good news since we're dealing with being slightly outnumbered it's nice to know that we have the advantage of being able to defend here so that gives me a chance to choose the ground and it seems like maybe digging in right along this water waterway is the way to go because he's going to probably come up this this road right here uh, so let's go ahead first of all we're gonna have to get everybody into a single line we're outnumbered we're gonna need as many men on that line as possible Henry Hunt's gonna be kind of our top division commander at this point Orlando Wilcox has got kind of the smallest division so um, we're gonna dig in right, right along here and then hope for the best I actually might dig in right here and here and then put these guys behind this fence just so we have a straighter line. I think that's probably what I'll do. Okay, so here are his cavalry out front, obviously screening his movement forward. That's under Jeb Stewart. And it looks like uh, General Thomas Jackson in the lead. We won't call him Stonewall because, well, he hasn't earned that nickname yet. Although I'm sure I'll probably slip and call him that plenty of times in this campaign. So we've got defensive orders for all of our commanding, uh, our division commanders. Now we'll see how they actually carry that out. It's almost evening, so we're not probably going to see a lot of combat on the first day. Looks like Baker sent out some skirmishers to take on the cavalry. We'll see how they do. Now he's pulling them back. Jackson's going to try to shift in and get over on Hunt's flank, it looks like. There's Simon Buckner. Looks like he's trying to shift his whole army over that way. We broke Stewart's calf. And there's the end of the day, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens here. I'm I'm kind of inclined to redeploy Wilcox's division over this way, still with a defensive order. Two hundred enemy casualties, only thirty-five for us. That's pretty good news. It's always better to be on the defensive. We've got slightly higher morale, but he has to attack. We're in a position where we can just kind of sit tight. I think he's waiting to get the rest of his 
and man in the line before he launches the attack. He's just sending skirmishers forward so far. We got William Tecumseh Sherman holding up the center of the line here. We still haven't upgraded any of these weapons. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to save the good weapons for the, the new units that I'll be starting to recruit here soon. Looks like Wilcox is going to shift his cavalry detachment out here to the flank. That makes sense. He's also moving the artillery out there, though. This guy's going to move their guns forward. Interesting. Not a lot happening right now. Just skirmishing. Okay, we'll skip ahead a little bit here in time. Uh, he keeps moving Preston's artillery further and further up. And there is another division coming in over here on my left. That makes me a little nervous. Hopefully this artillery is engaging in some counter battery fire. Although they're only six pounders. I don't know what he's got here. He's got 15 guns though. You can see the casualties pretty even so far. But remember, he's got an advantage in manpower here. So he could probably stretch his lines out around my flanks if he wants to. If I were micromanaging brigades, I'd probably send one forward to deal with that battery. But I'm not doing that. That's up to Hunt. He's the division commander. Getting a little nervous for... This division on the left here. I'm not sure what he's going to do. Our casualties are now slightly higher, and I think a lot of that has to do with the artillery. Sherman's taken a lot of losses. He's lost 200 men. It's all that artillery there. All right. I think what he's going to force me to do, he's going to force me to have to attack or at least advance the division forward. Since I can't do this at the brigade level, I can move the division up. And if I move that division up, then we're going to have to move Wilcox's division up too. But we've got, we can't just sit here and keep taking that artillery fire. Baker, Hooker, and Sumner are moving forward. Wilcox, you need to get going soon too, dude. All right, now he's going to bring his brigade down there. But that had the effect I wanted it to, which is to drive off that artillery. He's pulling them back now. And now it looks like he's sending skirmishers down. Come on, Wilcox, get up there. Okay, we still hold objectives. We're, we're taking more casualties than the enemy. Looks like Wilcox is getting moved up into position now. Who just made contact? Hooker. That's Sumner there. Oh, why aren't you digging in behind that creek? Why would you move ahead like that? Darn you fighting, Joe. He's going to get himself in trouble there. Now, that kind of thing happened. I'm, I'm editing my video for my other channel about the Iron Brigade right now. And when the Iron Brigade went into combat at Gettysburg, for example, uh, one of their regiments charged in to the attack, basically kind of moved way out in front, kind of like Hooker did right here, and just got torn to shreds. It was the second Wisconsin, while the, the other ones hadn't even gotten ready to go into battle yet. So sometimes that kind of thing did happen. Uh, Hooker, get, yeah, now he's getting back behind the line, but he's going to pay for it. Although he's only lost nine men so far. Right, it's getting interesting now. We're still waiting for Wilcox to get into position, which is leaving me exposed over here. Sumner's exposed to flanking fire from the Rockbridge artillery. 
Hooker just got hit with a melee attack, but he threw McCulloch's brigade back pretty good. Looks like Sumner's getting a nice uh, fire into Buckner's flank. And now Hooker once again is on the wrong side of the creek. And he's got an entire division bearing down on him. Barnard doesn't have the range to be able to fire into these guys as they're doing that, so we're going to have to give him an order to move up and get into the flank of all these guys that are coming down the center before they destroy the center of my line. Man, Hooker keeps throwing back everything that they hurl at him. He's very tired, though. They are trying to fall back to that line behind the creek again. Wilcox, what are you doing? Get your division up there. Sumner's trying to move into a new position. Man, this is frustrating, but this is the way it goes. Come on, Barnard, get your guys up there. once again trying to get behind that line. Should have been there to begin with, dude. So Keys has moved up. and get up there. So Keyes has issued the order to go long range, but Richardson hasn't, which is not very helpful at the moment. I don't know what in the world Wilcox is doing. I told him to move up to the creek, but he's still got Burnside sitting here at the fence. Hooker just does not seem to be able to get his men in the right place. There, now he's got them turned around finally. Oh man. Keys just got pummeled over here on the left. They broke him. Alright, Richardson, you're going to have to hold now. The real action is going to be here in the center where it's a big jumbled mess. It's like the wheat field at Gettysburg, just pouring unit after unit into one little place. Burnside did send a detachment, uh, some skirmishers up to drive off Rockbridge artillery, so that was good. Now we just got to see if we can hold here in the center. See what the casualties look like now. A thousand on each side. Drive them back, boys. Hopefully we can hold on the left. We need Richardson to hold. About to see another melee attack over here on the left side. Richardson's outnumbered two to one. This may not be pretty. doing Richardson hang on buddy hang on we just need maybe one or two of these Confederate brigades to break in the center before we lose the left I'm gonna give Wilcox an attack order. See if we can maybe get him to advance. It's 
all about Hooker holding in the center, and I'm not real confident of that right now. I'm looking at his loss resilience. His men are exhausted. He does have good cover, but he's also lost about 20%. Sumner's doing pretty good. Edward Baker's doing okay. Or Henry Baker, that's not Edward Baker. Richardson is hanging on nicely over here. It looks like we've got this one. All right, woo! Hanging on at the creek. Can't take too, more, too many more victories like that. Wow, how'd the casualties on the enemy side go up so fast? They were pretty even. All of a sudden they're at 2,400, 2,600 now. Must be the death trap that is the center there. Stonewall Jackson broke. Thomas Jackson. So that went from being even casualties to being pretty one-sided in a hurry. Okay, so final casualties. 1,800 for me, 3,500 for him. I don't know how that happened in such a hurry at the end there, but I am not complaining. The Battle of Aqueduct Bridge is a victory for us, and that should be the last victory before we can start... Uh, recruiting some real solid units into our army. Enemy national morale drops by almost a point, and our military experience uh, went up significantly as well. All right, so we're going to move our Gulf Blockading Squadron up here to the Mississippi Delta, start trying to blockade that port there. We're going to move the Atlantic Blockading Squadron back down um, to where they were before, and hopefully they'll do a little better than they did before. Uh, we do have a number of units queued up now. Let me go ahead and show where those are. Uh, we've got the Royal Redcoats Division uh, in the Army of Northeastern Virginia, uh, and that is the 1st Victorian Volunteers, the 42nd Royal Highlanders, the 60th Royal Americans, and the 1st Royal Artillery Battery. Uh, in Sumner's 5th Division, we've got the New Jersey Militia and the Pennsylvania Dutch Brigade uh, queued up. In the Department of Pennsylvania, the Foreign Legion. Irish Brigade, English Brigade, Spanish Brigade, and Prussian Brigade. Uh, Department of the Ohio, the Buckeye Bandits are going to be the first attached cavalry uh, directly to McClellan's headquarters. We've got Spurgeon's Roughnecks going into Hunter's Division. And then the Department of the West, we have the Sexy Division. Virginia Legion, Holly's Hurricanes, Gonzo's Gators, and Da Bears from Illinois. Nice Saturday Night Live reference there. So those are the ones we have recruited so far. We will definitely be doing more here in the very near future. All right, looks like we won a glorious victory at Annapolis. Uh, two ships sunk in the enemy fleet. Uh, that was the Atlantic Blockading Squadron in the process of moving south. Uh, they immediately ran into the North Carolina Squadron, who is beating a hasty retreat back down to the south. Army of the Northwest, which is a Confederate army, he withdrew in the face of the firepower of Irvin McDowell's 13,000 man strong army, soon to be nearly 28,000. Uh, army of the Potomac, the Confederate Army of the Potomac has just 4,000 men. Uh, looks like Colonel Palmer, who was wounded, has recovered. And Department of Pennsylvania has 6,000 men. That's going to grow to 18,000. I think we could probably go ahead and start making our move back across the Potomac toward Winchester. Out in the west, we need to keep an eye on the Missouri State Guard, who are very close to St. Louis. We cannot let St. Louis fall under any circumstances. Department of the West under Harney, uh, not in a very good state of readiness so far, but they will eventually have 10,000 men. Confederacy just extended their contracts out to three years. That is the only Confederate invasion right now that we have to worry about. Okay, time to recruit a new army. This one's going to be based out of Cairo, Illinois to start. Uh, we're going to call it the Army. And the Army of the Mississippi actually works. It is definitely not going to be under Robert Patterson, nor will it be under Ennis Palmer. Uh, we want this one to be under Mr. Grant. If you've heard me talk for more than, well, ever, you know I'm a huge fan of General Grant. So uh, we're going to definitely put this new army under him. We'll get a couple of divisions going. We may have to replace those division commanders, although those aren't the worst division commanders ever. So let me go ahead and recruit our first troops there, and then we're going to base them in Cairo, which is where Grant started out. 
All right, our department in Pennsylvania now has 15,000 men. We can make a serious move on Winchester with that. Uh, he's only got about a third that many. Uh, we'll take Winchester, take over this manufacturing, uh, get a base of supply there, and then try to hold that for the rest of the war. His Army of the Northwest here has basically nobody, but I don't know where his Army of the Shenandoah is. That's what concerns me a little bit, because I know they're out there somewhere. We just may not see them. McDowell's got about 22,000 men. Similar to the number he moved on northeastern Virginia with in the first place. It's uh, July 19th, so we're right around the time of the historic battle of First Bull Run. Uh, Numbers-wise, Confederates have about 78,000 men in the field. We've got just 67,000, but we've got a bunch on the way. Obviously, Navy tonnage, we've got about a 10 to 1 advantage right now. Uh, and casualties, there really haven't been that many so far. All right, here's going to be a good opportunity to be on the offensive. Uh, he's only got 4,800 men to defend. So we're going to make this move <clears throat> on Winchester. Winchester is the town that is at the north northeastern end, I guess you could say, of the Shenandoah Valley, which was called the breadbasket of the Confederacy. Uh, it was where Lee's army was fed from quite a bit. Uh, and so that's why Winchester was fought over so much. It was uh, the town that changed hands the most during the war, something like 70 times, uh, because both sides recognized the importance uh, of the Shenandoah Valley. So we're going to be fighting this on the Winchester battlefield, and we've got to be aggressive here. Uh, as we are on the offensive, we've got a 3-1 to one advantage in manpower. We're going to get to see some of our first patron units in action. Uh, the Foreign Legion is completely constituted. Uh, so we've got the Irish Brigade, the English Brigade, the Spanish Brigade, and the uh, Prussian Brigade. So we're going to get a chance to see all of them in action. Okay, so our new unit's going to lead the way. The English Brigade's going to be first in line. We've given them an attack stance. We're going to move south of town. Uh, let's go ahead and tell Cadwallader's division to move in. To a supporting role on their left uh, and then we'll do the same with Gibbon over on the right we'll see how quickly we run into these guys our Englishmen are out front they're pretty pretty far out front too the Irish Brigade uh, is going to move in down by a different road and they're going to move in right along this line though we're probably going to advance even further I would expect the Confederates to be somewhere. Oh, no, they're going to be right there. Okay. So, actually, the orders we gave to kind of move in along this creek seem to be a good one. He's going to be fortified right in there. I don't know why Zook's not moving. Oh, they're attached directly to the Army commander. That's why we're going to have to adjust that. So Cadwallader's division only has 1,800 men, which means it's smaller than a lot of the brigades. And the reason for that is that uh, those units that were three-month units, uh, their enlistments have run out, and so now they're switching over to uh, two-year units, uh, which means a lot of them don't re-enlist, so those numbers are pretty small right now. Uh, we could probably combine them into a single brigade, although they will build themselves up on their own and fill those numbers. It's going to take a while for that to happen. Uh, so really, that's just a brigade-sized division and not even a big brigade because most of our brigades, our new brigades, have 3,000 men in them. So we're going to tell the Foreign Legion to move into a position right here on the right of the Confederates. We'll have Gibbon uh, move in facing with his two brigades. Cadwallader will bring him over here. Uh, we'll have them facing to kind of keep these guys where they are, and then we'll move in for a flank attack with these other guys. Whoa! I did give attack orders, so I guess it makes sense that he just kind of went crazy there. Uh, all right, Gibbon, let's switch you to a defensive order. We're just kind of holding the position to keep these guys honest so they don't switch to face the attack over here. It's going to take a little while for our foreign legion to get in a position to launch their attack. Uh, 
I just hope we don't get these other brigades torn up too much in the meantime. All right, Scammon's division's in position. So let's go ahead and tell him to, to move up. Looks like the, uh, the English Brigade, they're going to have to kind of move back across the bridge over here. That might get a little dicey. And then let's see how he handles this attack. We're waiting for the courier to arrive with the orders, and then those orders are going to have to filter down to the brigades. Here they go. Now these guys are equipped with decent weapons. Looks like they're going to deploy some skirmishers. We've got Springfield rifled muskets, Springfield rifled muskets, uh, Lorenz rifles, and then Enfields over here on the end. And the Confederates are adjusting because of that attack on their flank. If I had gotten Cadwallader in a position a little sooner, that might have been better. All right, now let's go ahead and tell Gibbon to go back into an attack stance. We'll see how this goes. We've got a three to one man advantage. So this should turn out to be a victory. Right now it's just skirmishing. Dude, move them up. Gibbons got his coming. His attack's commencing pretty well here. But we need this attack to go in too. And then let's go ahead and tell Cadwallader to move up. It's going to be an all out attack from all sides. Gammon does not seem to... Oh, there he goes. Excellent. I was going to say, he doesn't seem to want to move his men into an attack. But the move's coming now. You can see the order he gave. They're going to go straight at him. And then this should pretty well quickly spell defeat for them. Spanish Brigade's moving forward. The others are in not quite as much of a hurry. Got the Irish Brigade in the green over here on the left. The Prussians in the Prussian blue. Spanish in the Spanish yellow. And the English in the, in the red. So it's easy to tell who's who on the battlefield with that division. We've got an all-out attack going now. Hopefully we can break these guys pretty quick. The Irish are going to move right into position here against Yule's Brigade. You can see they switched to a long range attack now. nervous for Gibbons division over here on the right. Not sure why he's holding the Prussians back. I'd like to see the Irish move up a little bit, but I'm not going to micromanage. Alright, how about we tell the Foreign Legion to assault? Push them all in there. Let's break these guys. Some pretty 
hot fire going on in there. Here go the English Brigade. They're going to charge in there. The Prussians are still being held in reserve. Love to see the Irish move forward. They're waiting for those orders. Hampton's legions just getting torn up. Here come the Prussians. Yeah, there goes Hampton's legion. I had a feeling that was only a matter of time. Now here comes the assault. They're charging in there. They're gonna they might destroy Hampton's Legion altogether. Nice to see the AI acting competently on my orders. Although it was a three to one advantage, so I shouldn't be surprised. Yule just broke. This is gonna be a major victory, our first of the war. That's because we've inflicted almost 30% casualties on the enemy. In fact, I'm kind of curious here. Let's take a look. We haven't looked at the reports a lot lately. Let's look at the combat report. Uh, and we can actually see who inflicted the casualties uh, on the enemy. Oh, if we go back and inspect the battlefield, we can do this. Uh, so the Foreign Legion inflicted 936 casualties on the enemy, which is by far the most. Uh, and looks like the Irish Brigade did most of the damage in that particular battle, which is nice to see. Uh, and then, of course, we can see our own casualties. Uh, the English Brigade took 25 killed, 109 wounded, 31 missing, for a total of 165 casualties, uh, which was the most among the brigades in that division. Of course, the Foreign Legion makes up the vast majority of this army. So, All right, that was good. Okay, uh, the Harpers Ferry Armory, we're going to start to upgrade because uh, we're going to need that supply base. Let's go ahead and take a look at that army for just a second because obviously we need to do some, uh, some combining. You can see 731 men, 522. We could wait and let those build back up, but I'm just going to go ahead and combine them. Uh, we're going to put... We're going to do it that way because that frees up George Thomas to be a, uh, a division commander now. Patterson's artillery is assigned directly to the army commander, so we're going to switch that over. Uh, and what are those, by the way? Those are 12-pound howitzers. Okay. So that gives Gibbon now almost 3,000 men. It will eventually work its way up to be a little higher once these units uh, start to reconstitute themselves. We don't have a lot of decent weapons to upgrade with right now. I want to save those for patron units, so uh, nothing new happening right now. Almost even now in numbers in the field, and we still have a bunch of units that are queued up. All right, there's the army of the Shenandoah. I wondered where they were. They've got 25,000, well, 17,000 men, uh, but they're working their way up to 25,000. Uh, so that's a pretty even matchup against McDowell's army. Let's go ahead and take a look at finances for just a minute. Uh, we don't really need to invest anything in civil order because there aren't any issues with that right now um, due to raiding, drafting, combat losses, etc. Uh, recruitment we could use a boost to because I want to start building up those numbers in those units that have suffered attrition or uh, that have switched over from three-month units to two-year units. Transportation I'm not too worried about right now. Um might invest a little bit in, well, we don't have the ability to invest in agriculture or industry right now. Uh, diplomacy, we could invest a little bit in. Uh, let's look at policies for a second. We still have two available policies, so we don't need to invest in that. We're about to complete industrialization one, which will allow us to invest in industry. So let's go ahead and skip ahead to when that happens. It's July 20th now. There we go. So now back to policies we go. 
and I'm trying to think of where we want to go with that. We could go Militia Act 4, which will give us 36 month units. Military 2 would allow the ability to have core, uh, and it allows subsidies to be boosted as well. Uh, financially, we're still okay. We're still on A on credit, so I'm not going to worry about government funding right now. What about civilian warships? Oh, it's going to allow some new units to be created there, so that might be the way to go. Legal blockade. Uh, I think we're going to go Diplomacy 2 for now. And then let's go back to Finances and actually invest a little bit. No, it's not still not, not letting me do that. Okay, this is going to be a big battle here. We've got Irvin McDowell. <laughs> How cool is this? The Army of Northeastern Virginia, the Army of the Shenandoah, McDowell versus Johnston. It's July 21st, 1861, the day of the historic battle, uh, first battle of Bull Run. Here we go. Okay, we're back at the same battlefield we fought, the first battle of Aqueduct Bridge. Uh, this is going to be fun. This is going to be our biggest battle so far when you add the numbers on both sides. Once again, we get to be on the defense. But it's going to be a bigger battle this time. So, uh, again, I, I like digging in right here. Is that where he's going to be is the question. Looks like he's coming in from that same road. So I think we're going to go with a similar battle strategy to the first time. Only this time we've got more men to do it with. Uh, Edwin Sumner's 5th Division. I don't know if I want to build a do a single line. I guess we probably should. What I'll do is I'm going to do single line formation, and then I'm going to maybe hold uh, one division back. Let's see. All the divisions are pretty similar in size, except Royal Redcoats, which is massive, uh, and then the 5th Division. So these will probably be our two front line divisions to start. Uh, and then maybe we hold the others in reserve. Okay, so we're going to hold Barnard's 1st Division, 4,000 men, in reserve. We'll put Wilcox over here on the right in the woods. Uh, we're going to put Mansfield right here, and we're going to dig him in along this creek in the fence line uh, in a defensive posture. Uh, we'll have Henry Hunt's 3rd Division in the center. And then we put Sumner and his 5th Division over on the left. Looks like I can't send him orders quite yet. Okay, so it looks like he is going to try to come down this other road. So thankfully we do have a reserve in place. Uh, so let's shift Barner's division over there to that side. At least till we see what he's doing. I can't shift my whole army because it doesn't mean he's not still going to send somebody down this road. But this is why it's good to have a reserve. We may have to pull Sumner's division out and put him over that way. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'll put him in reserve for now until we see what's happening. I don't know if we're going to get there in time. And we're also not getting there with our best units. These are units with mi mis ah, mixed muskets still. All right, so he sees us shifting, and that's causing him to redeploy himself. So now maybe we have to send Sumner back after all to where we were. Sorry, Sumner. Go back. This kind of thing did happen. Um, it what became the Battle of Champion Hill. John C. Pemberton, the uh, commander for the Confederates, uh, had issued orders to his men to go one way, and then as they were already stretched out and going that way, he issued orders for them to do a 180 and come back the other way, which meant now that their wagons were in front instead of in the rear. So we're going to go ahead and let Barnard get into position over there, but we'll hold everybody else over here. He's got his artillery coming down that road. Speaking of artillery, oh, it's a Rockbridge artillery. I thought it said Breckenridge for a second there. Oh, it does say Breckenridge. That might be the guy we were just talking about. 
Surprise, surprise, Mr. Artillery, although we can't hit him from here. At least not yet. I'll go ahead and speed back up. Come on, guys, get in position. So Stewart's Cav once again out front, just like they were before. Oh, what's going on here? Looks like Mansfield's redeploying his division based on what's happening. Now Wilcox is doing the same. Oh boy, I don't know if I like this. I had a really good defensive position there. What are you guys doing? underestimating the enemy strength right now it appears we're estimating them at 17,000 we know he's got more than that here comes the artillery he likes to move his artillery out front man what a mess this deployment is right now. All right, let's. How about we take the Royal Redcoats up? I don't like being straddled across this creek, though. He's shifting all the way out over here. All right, so we maybe bring Sumner over here, refuse the line. Put Mansfield up maybe along this road right here. Oh, here he comes. The good news is we're we're gonna get dark in a couple hours here. So maybe we'll have a chance to redeploy. And in the meantime, I don't like that the attack's gonna key on one of my weaker divisions. What do we got over here? We got Burnside. So we've got some of our weakest troops. These are our uh, troops that are small in number and uh, weak in terms of the weaponry that they have. All right, let's tell Mansfield to attack. Let's hit his flank. Time's attached directly to the army headquarters, uh, and then let's bring let's bring Henry Hunt's division in as a reserve over here. There's not much to it; only 3,000 men. How are we doing? Shanks getting lit up. Wow, he's just hammering me here. Come on, Hunt or Mansfield, get moving. You have an attack order, get up there and attack. I don't know that Barnard's division is going to hold over here. Why'd Hooker drop back? Hooker's about to get a, a perk already. Interesting. So those perks, uh, it's a combination. Uh, the experience comes from training if you have good officers, especially officers that have good stats in the right areas, but also then from performing in battle. All right, Mansfield, get him in there. So Mansfield was uh, famously killed, I think, at Antietam. He was a corps commander, killed at Antietam. No, 
All right, how are we doing here? Casualties are pretty even. We've inflicted slightly more on the enemy. Hey, Barnard, not bad, buddy. Although, I think they may be on their last legs. He just doesn't have that many men. Hey, Wilcox, why don't we move that division up a little bit there, buddy? Mansfield, let's get this attack moving. This did not go at all the way I thought it would. I'm going to send Kaim over here to deal with that artillery. Yeah, Shank's about to fall back. Keyes is losing a lot. Barnard's division as a whole is lost just an insane amount of men, about a third of their men, and they've been routed. There it is. Alright, Sumner, let's get you onto the line now. Come on, Mansfield, get that attack going. We're about to hit nightfall. It's July, though, so we probably have till 9, 10 o'clock. The attack at Gettysburg on East Cemetery Hill and then on the Culp's Hill, I mean, that, that was there was a lot of fighting in the dark that was going on there. Oh, what a mess over here. The good news is Man Mansfield's about to get some fire on this artillery battery here. Hopefully we'll drive them off. Actually, he's already got skirmishers up there. All right, Kaim, hit these guys. Let's deal with that battery. Rock Bridge Artillery. Bye bye What a mess. Pretty even casualties. Oh, Kime got driven back because there was a second battery over here. So he hit the first one, but the second one lit him up. Only lost 11 men, though. Come on, Mansfield. Hit these guys. You can see he does have an order out for um, one of the brigades to charge into that battery. First Victorian Volunteers looks like they're going to be the ones to go in. He's sending a lot of skirmishers out. What do we got over here? New Jersey Militia. Easy to see them at night. Nice bright blue uniforms. Ugh. Here they go. Where's Hooker? Is he still on the battlefield somewhere? He is. He still hasn't gotten his perk, though. Uh, my center and my right are just a mess. Let's get Sumner moved up. Mansfield, you should be moving the whole thing forward. Although he did drive off that battery, so that was good. What we need right now is nighttime to hit so we can redeploy. Get some order to this chaos. Here comes Burnside. Why is he moving him all the way over there? Hooker's going to get destroyed on his flank if he doesn't shift. division is he in? He's Wilcox's division. 
There we go. He shifted finally. All right. It's not pretty, but I think it's going to be a victory. Heavy casualties on both sides. There it is. Beautiful. So let's take a look. I'm curious to look at the combat report here. At the casualties inflicted. So you can see 1st Division and the 2nd Division did the, more, uh, the majority of the inflicting of casualties. Let's see how the Royal Redcoats did. They weren't real... I'm kind of surprised by that. No, that's Henry Hunt. That's not them. Here we go. So Chapman's detachment. That's uh, some skirmishers. Um, here, here's the victories. Here's the casualties inflicted. First Victorian volunteers, 551 casualties inflicted. How many men did they lose in doing that? I'm always curious to kind of see those things. Seven hundred forty-nine. So pretty brutal for them both ways around. Okay. So we lost about twenty-seven hundred men, and the estimate of enemy casualties is about thirty-five hundred. So it's all good. We're going to wrap it up right there for today's episode. We've got a good start to things, but a long, long way to go. Uh, it's going to take a lot of time and effort and battles to move our armies south uh, to go at the enemy. And I'm going to try to largely follow the strategy uh, of the historic armies. This is going to move us uh, at least into northeastern Virginia a little bit. Uh, here's the situation. He still slightly outnumbers us, but we, we're going to continue to queue up those units to get them going. We'll see you again the day after tomorrow. Tomorrow, I will be starting a new campaign playthrough on Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. We finally have a campaign on that game. Did a stream last night. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoy the campaign. Thanks for watching.